The Jordan, you know, here it is, Joshua, whose name means Hoshea, Yeshua, Jesus. He puts 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan, you know, 1,500 years before Christ comes and dies. And, and it's in Bethel Beret, in John chapter 1, verse 28. Here it is, you know, John is baptizing in Bethel Beret, which means threshold of the door, you know, the east gate. And here it is, Jesus comes to John, you know, and he's actually standing, you know, on an altar that was prepared for him 1,500 years before he even came. Man, the, the, the mystery of the 12 stones that was in the Jordan. And then last week I talked about not only did they have to take 12 stones and put it underneath the Ark of the Covenant that was in the Jordan, you know, but he said also bring and, and place 12 stones in Gilgal, remember that, which means circuit or cycle, which is the land of Shechem. And this is where he's got the two mountains on either side, Mount Gershom and Mount Ebal. And man, and, and right in the middle is where the tabernacle was set when Joshua crossed the Jordan, which was absolutely mind-blowing. And the blessings and curses I talked about last week, these are the two mountains. It's no different than Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb or Mount Moriah. And, and, and the Mount of Olives. You have the olive tree and the fig tree. One is the tree of life and one is the tree of the, 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 the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that produces death. But it actually, when you look into that tree, it's really all about Yeshua. It's about Jesus. So until you get the light, you won't understand. And, and Shechem, which means shoulder, uh, or to carry, you know, he carried, or we commanded to carry the cross of Darren. And, um, Man, it's just the Lord started opening up things that was, I mean, the axe head. Think about that. When, you know, Elisha, whose name means Yeshua, where did the axe head go? You know, they go down, they want to expand the camp, and 50 prophets go with them. That's the spirit, and they have Jordan. And he's cutting down a tree. John's at the Jordan. He said the axe head is already at the tree. The axe head is Christ. It went in the river. It was buried. And Elisha takes a stick, cuts it down, and says, where did it go? Well, that axe head really went on top of that altar, believe it or not. Oh, there it is right there. And he threw that stick, and the axe head rose again. That's Jesus Christ. He is the axe head. I mean, and it was just like he started opening the scriptures up that was just like, wow. And you think about, you know, one of the things, you, you got a white garment on. You know, the blood makes us white. And on the side, you have the, the seat, the 613 knots, which represent the Word of God. And in Deuteronomy, thir in Deuteronomy chapter 31, the Lord had said, He said, look, He said, when He built the ark, you know, and everything, He said, place the, the ark, the, the, tablet, the tablets, and the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that blooded, uh, that budded and brought forth an almond fruit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one earthen vessel. Remember that? He said, but take the, the book of the law and place it on the side of the ark. That's why you wear the teat seat on side of you. It's the reason, I mean, back then, it was written in stone. You could, can you imagine carrying laws in stone? I mean, my God. So they made the blue, the blue. Why is the blue? The blue is the veil. Look above us. It's the veil that's up there. But through Christ, that veil is rent. And we're able to see what's behind the veil. Well, guess what? In Solomon's temple, Herod's temple, when the veil went, the ark wasn't there. Because the ark was walking among them. Right? That veil's rent. He's not dead. He's alive. Son. He's walking amongst us. Ah! That's fire, son. It just brings you in. And they talk about even in the world, they say, oh, the red pill and the blue pill. What pill are you on? The red or the blue? Well, if you're on the blue pill, well, I guess, you know. And it's crazy because what the world used, that's why your television screen is blue. And you can't see through what they're trying to show you, what the real thing is behind it, until you take the red pill, and that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then you can see behind the veil what they're hiding in plain sight. That's right. Only by the Word of God. Amen. That's the truth. Son, we're going to talk about the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill will take you down the hole. And that red pill is the gospel of Jesus Christ, although the world has taken the red pill and made it something different. Supposedly, only the elite know. Wrong. 
they're in the long they're in the wrong light they're in the you know the what it's called uh, the luciferian light analucious wrong light pops sorry wrong light that's the s-u-n light sunlight that's not the light the sun the s-o-n the one that <laughs> that gives you the revelation and reveals the truth the word it's the only truth it's the only thing we have to go by so that when we begin to process the word of God we can see what's behind the veil wow let me show you what's behind the veil or what they're really trying to show you and tell you because what they showing you is going to lead you straight to hell that's right right I love this place <laughs> so anyway um, it's uh so just I got into it man and, and the Lord took me and I started studying names and numbers and colors and what they are symbolic to and what they represent and and you know it, it, it's like uh, and, and when I was telling you before about those stones you couldn't carry them before 613 laws you know he said you know that's why they wear the tallit teat seat they got it all the knots around them but now you know that was a foreshadow of now you know we carried the, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword here it is right here Amen. it's right here this is what we carry this is what we need to be known by the armor the word this is our only this is in the armor of God this is the only thing we have to fight the enemy everything else in there is defensive a helmet of salvation that means place it upon your head when you've accepted Yeshua as your Savior you are saved and don't you know fall back like others do but pursue put your hands to the plow and don't look back why is he saying that so you don't break your plow and what you're digging the ground with and the ground is people if you see me doing this today and doing something else tomorrow, walking out the bar, what's up? I guess what? You ain't plowing no fields. You broke your plow. Don't look back. Why? Because in Israel there's stones. And if they look back, bam, they'll break the plow. It's broken. It's no more good. Walk the walk. Talk the talk. First, don't say anything. Right? Amen. And read it and devour it. Yeah. Yes. Learn it, know it. This is what you need. Yeah. This is what this is our roadmap. This is what's going to lead us and guide us. Too many people have too many opinions about this thing, and they haven't even read it. But they want to give you their opinion about it from something they've been taught. Yeah, right. I think they're going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. You have to have that personal relationship, that communion to come into union with Him. Amen. You have to come into the holy place, to the uh, table of showbread, to the, the light and the illumination of the lampstand. You have to have it. The Holy Spirit shedding the light on the bread, the face bread. That means to come face to face with Him in the tabernacle, in the holy place. The altar, that, the altar of incense, a lampstand, a showbread table. It was called the bread of face. Every seventh day it was changed. It was warm. And when they took it off, like it just would come out of the oven. That's why Bethlehem is called heaven's oven. That's why the bread of life came to, to Bethlehem, was born in Bethlehem. Not only does it mean heaven's oven, but also, you know, it means the house of bread. Heaven's oven or the house of bread. Where it came forth and when you come into communion with him when you come and you begin to get in his word this is how you have communion that right there that we're going to do in, in you know a little bit later man that's only an outward symbolic thing of what you're supposed to be doing you and me spiritually with him learning of him growing of him eating him john 6 6 6 not many stayed with him they left when he said that you must you know drink my blood eat my flesh and drink my blood and many left I didn't see Jesus running after him hey hey wait that ain't what I meant I meant I'm gonna go die that's what I'm no but those that stuck with him and came into communion with him at night he began to explain it to him no way he meant us eat his flesh that's an abomination spiritual 
Jews are not one physically. The true Jews, Jesus said, are those that are spiritual Jews that have been circumcised of the heart. So does it matter what tribe you're from? No. You better be of that tribe. You better be of that tribe, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. That means you better have been baptized, asked him, born unto him out of his side, the blood in the water. That's the only way. Right. So, man, when the Lord began to open things up and show me, I was like, wow. I had to throw so much stuff away. Because, and then through throwing things away and disagreeing, you know, I'm talking about 13 years, 13 years before the Lord even opened a pulpit to me. A pulpit. Wow. That can be a pit, the deepest pit you've ever been in. Religion. You can be, and I heard that from Dan, the deepest pit to be in is a pulpit, especially when all you know is religion. And you ain't been set free, truly set free. But anyway, I want to talk to you guys um, about uh, the blood purchase. Um, open, your, uh, open your Bibles. We're going to start reading in uh, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Um, you're going to find out that when you read in the Beret HaDashah, the New Testament or the New Covenant, we're under this New Covenant if you don't have an understanding of the Old Covenant, you're going to have no idea, you know, very vaguely what they're talking about in the, new, in the New Covenant. Because all they do is they keep referencing back. That's all they do. Keep referencing back. I mean, you open up John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. In the beginning, that word Barit Sheet brings you back to Genesis. So you ain't going to have no idea what John's talking about if you haven't went through Genesis. And that's what they, he does continually. All of these apostles and prophets and, and the going forth of the Word, all they're going to do, Paul and his letters, all he's going to be doing is connecting you back to the old. You know? And... That's right. That's all they had. They ain't had no... I mean, it was compiled around 130 or whatever it was, but yeah, they didn't have... Uh, that's right. That's right. And that's why Paul was like, look, I'm in prison, but bring me the parchments, you know, my cloak. But especially the parchments. Paul, being a Pharisee, I mean, God chose him for a reason. Changed his name from Saul to Paul. You know, which is, remember Saul was a giant. He was big. He wasn't a giant giant, but he was head and shoulders bigger than his brethren. And that's who, you know, here it is, uh, Paul, uh, Saul, you know, God changed his name to Paul, and Paul means little. So God humbled him and brought him down, son, but then used him for his glory. Let's start reading, and I'll show you how... Uh, kind of see how things worked up. Yeah, I'm going to explain some things to you. Um, now let me, let me just kind of connect the dots with you. Um, so let's pray. Father, in, in the name of Yeshua, we thank you, Father, for your word. And Lord, we thank you for the people that, uh, that are here, our brothers and sisters. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, be with them and, 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 and just lead them and guide them, Father. Lord, thank you for your spirit, Lord, that's here today. Lord, just uh, let it be your words, Father, and not mine. You speak in Jesus' name, in the name of Yeshua. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 1. Acts simply means the Acts of the Apostles. That's all it means. When they went forth. So this is going to kind of tie. You get, you get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, uh, but if you're going to go into the book of Acts, you first you want to read the book Luke. Because Luke ties in Acts. So Luke, he, uh, he's a physician. And he followed Paul. I guess he didn't have much of a ministry after that. He's uh, supposed to, you know what I mean? Paul's healing people and he put him out of business. So I guess Luke just followed him. Right? Here we go. Just So anyway, so if you want to tie back into, I would suggest you reading Luke. And then, uh, because uh, we don't exactly know what the thorn in Paul's flesh was. Um, I believe that... Um, um, when he was on the road to Damascus and he was blinded, he was knocked down. Um, and he went into, uh, 
he stayed um, in the house, and they, you know, Ananias is told to go pray for him. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He taught the law. He was blinded. Jesus called them blind guides because they didn't have understanding. They didn't accept Yeshua. So when Ananias goes over there, he lays hands on Paul, on Saul, and his name is changed. And it says, and the scales fell from his eyes. That is the serpent scales. That is the serpent in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Saul or Paul was blinded by the law. And when those scales fell from his eyes, you can do a back, you can go look into that. For the first time in his life, he saw the light, his eyes were open to the truth, and that truth was Yeshua. Yeshua is the true light of the world that opened his eyes. That's the only thing that will cause the scales to fall from your eyes. So now, um, the writings that we're looking at, the epistles, 13, um, we find that, you know, it says that Paul wrote 13, I believe 14, because of Hebrews. Because Hebrews has a direct tie to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, where Paul says, you know, where you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, you know, and give you, receive the milk and not the meat. That's exactly what was said in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6. So it means that if I get too deep for you, that means you need to study your Bible more. Because I'm not going to back off. I'll sling, I, I ain't going to sling pork chops at you. <laughs> I'll sling T-bones at you and, and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I can't do that because, you know, it's all good. But anyway, uh, we're going to die when I'm not getting into that stuff. So. Anyway, um, we made... Uh, so let's let's dive into it, and I'm gonna read. Um, I'm gonna read to where the Lord will stop me right here. It's in all, I ain't gonna go past Acts chapter one unless He tells me to go further. Um, but it, it's it's all good. We are um, we're no longer. Uh, I don't want to get into. Let's just read. All right, <clears throat> chapter one, Acts. Remember, it's. Uh, Oh, I told you. Let me get back to where I was. That I believe the, the thorn in Paul's flesh that he pray, prayed about three times was his eyesight. If you go to Galatians, you'll find out that Paul prayed three times. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient. You know, in your weakness I'm made strong. Paul says in Galatians, he said, if it were possible, brethren, you'd have ripped out your own eyes and given them to, me, to you. And in Galatia, that was the makers of eye balm or eye salve. So that's why I believe, and that's why I believe that Paul didn't do much writing. He had Luke that was doing the majority of his writing for him because he had an issue with his eyes. His eyes never, though the scales dropped from his eyes, I believe personally his physical eyes, he was blinded, you know, by Christ, by the brightness of the light. But his spiritual eyes were open in that the scales fell from his eyes and he had an eye issue that he wanted it. Probably, burned, Probably, you know. So that is just from what I can gather, um, and just a little bit about Paul. He wasn't a big man. He was he, he was small in stature, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. But that doesn't matter. He was his 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 power came through the word, yeah. and that's where it's at. I don't care how big you are. That's right. Um, all power and authority comes through the word. Let's read. All right. The former, uh, the former book have I made uh, or have written, O Theopolis, of all Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. As I go through this, I'll explain a few things to y'all. Um, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion, that's the cross, by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That forty days is very important. We see forties all through the word of God. Moses, forty days. The children of Israel, forty years. Elijah and uh, Moses fasting forty days. He showed himself forty days before he went up into the heaven. And he told them to go wait and tarry till they be endued with power. That was ten days they had to wait. And we'll connect some dots from there. But um, it says, To whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now remember, they wanted him to set the kingdom up right there, but the kingdom is within. We live in a fallen world that Lucifer, this is his kingdom. That's why Lucifer offered it to Jesus. Bow down and worship me and I'll give you what has been given unto me. Remember that? 
meaning he took it from Adam. All right. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, uh, uh, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from here. That word baptize is baptism or baptismo. It, it means to be immersed, baptized on the outside. John baptized the outer man, the flesh, but not many days from here you're going to be baptized or washed on the inside. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. Because fire is what you and I have to walk through. Your works are going to be put through to the test by fire. So this baptism that Jesus Christ is talking about, or Paul is talking about right here, is that not many days hence, the Holy Spirit's going to come live and dwell inside of you, and He's going to cleanse your inside so that He can come dwell inside of you. That's what it's about, okay? And what's that for? Let's keep reading. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. They're looking for, the, for Jesus to sit on his throne of David and begin to rule and reign. But we know that it's about 2,000 years later that's going to happen. So they, they have no need to know right now. Meaning that you got from Adam to Noah two days, Noah to Jesus two days, Jesus to now is about two days, 6,000 years of man's history, and then the Lord returns. Which, I can get into that with you later. But ye shall receive, watch this. Now the whole purpose of this, he says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. So the whole reason for the Holy Spirit to come is to empower you to make your witness for Him. No spirit, no power. You understand? Right. No spirit, no power. You can't be a witness. Peter could not be a witness for Jesus Christ in that he denied Him. But after he received the Spirit of God, he was crucified upside down. Yeah. Remember that? you got to be in due with power to become a witness for Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You have to accept Him. First, you have to realize what you are and who you are and that you need a Savior. We'll get into that. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto, bo unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. So that's what we're being called to be, a witness, just like our brother stood up and said. And when you stand up for truth, you will be rejected. And, you know, your gathering is going to be small. I watched, believe me, and you already know, I ain't got to tell you. It's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. <laughs> Speak the truth and find out what happens. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received out of their sight. Now we know that's, the Bible says that's how he's going to return as well. Zechariah chapter 14 says he comes back down to the Mount of Olives. He left on the Mount of Olives, right? And every eye will see him. In verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in apparel. Two, because two is witness. Right? Which said also, Ye men of Galilee, so God is establishing something, why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus, or Yeshua, uh, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, we get, how is the Lord going to return? What he said in Matthew 24. If you hear him in a desert, don't go. If you hear him over by such and such as house, don't go. But as lightning comes from the east and shines unto the west, that means you can see lightning shoot across the sky. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That means every eye will see him when he comes. And that don't mean by television. I'm sorry. Amen. That don't mean by television. Right? The Bible says the heavens are going to roll back like a scroll. Revelations. Then return they unto Jerusalem. Remember, Jesus said, go wait and tarry. Jesus told them. How many did he tell? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, about 500. 380 took a walk after Jesus told them to stay. How many of you think is going to stay with us if I tell them to stay? 
There ain't gonna be many. <laughs> Jesus said, we need to stay here. Well, okay. And here it is. Jesus said himself, look, guys. He said, hey, I want you to, you know, go in Jerusalem. You know, this is during the Passover, you know, time, Passover, first fruits. You know, um, at, um, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost. Pentecost, Pena, 50. It's the day of Pentecost. That's also the Tower of Babel when the Holy Spirit took the tongues. That's when it came down on the day of Pentecost and took them away. So it takes the Holy Spirit to gather us back up again, right? He tells them to go stay in an upper room. We went through that already. That's speaking of the Tower of Babel. We talked about how when Peter explained it in Acts chapter 2, the first place he built the church was in Babylon because he wanted to go run over there and tell them. Wow, that's pretty amazing stuff. Anyway, verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Avlet, which from Jerusalem is a Sabbath day's journey. It's just right through the Kidron Valley, right on the other side. It's not really that, it's not far at all. It's a good little walk. I was there. And when they come in, they went up to the upper room where they abode, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and James, and the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, uh, the zealot, zealot, zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. Now that Judah, the brother of James, that's, his, that's the half-brothers of Jesus right there. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus with his brethren. And in those days, I like that right there, and they all continued with one accord. That means in unity. In prayer and supplication. Yes? And he says, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, that's numbered uh, about 120. Now that's very important. This is a time of a new beginning, a new start. That's why God had told Moses, I mean Noah, yet in 120 years I'm going to destroy the earth. So just like it was a new beginning then with Noah, yet in 120 years, here we're seeing the 120 again. It's a new beginning, right? So time starts, you know, at the cross, not at his birth, at the death, which goes back to Moses in Egypt. It was 40 years, remember, 40 years with Egypt, 40 years with Jethro, and then 40 years in the wilderness, and he died when he was 120 years old when Joshua crossed over. That 120 is symbolic to the 120 jubilees of man's life that we have to go through before we cross over. Joshua, the Jordan rolled back like a scroll, remember? Amen. Many, it says, men and brethren, verse 16, men and brethren, this scripture must needs be, have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Judas was a guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us. So he was once part of the, the group, right? And had obtained part of the ministry. Wow. Now this man purchased a field and with the reward of iniquity, of sin, and fallen headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels did gush out. Now in one place it says that Judas hanged himself and in another place it says that his bowels, he hanged himself and his bowels had, you know, gushed out. But what had happened was he had hung himself and as he was there for a while, he fell headlong, meaning his head was decapitated from his body and he fell and hit the rocks and he busted open and everybody knew about it. That's why this place that they purchased with that blood money was, um, you know, nobody wanted to have any part of that. That money betrayed the one they put on a, on a cross, you know. So anyway, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem insomuch as the field is called in the proper tongue a keldama. And that is to say the field of blood. Amen. And it says, uh, he says, and I'm going to stop right there. Verse 20, For it is written in the book of Psalms, I might go one more, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. And, um, and then they, they choose another one to fill, you know, position uh, of Judas. I, I stopped right there. I never did a, um, I never did a, uh, 
first time I did a, a breakdown on a caldema and um, knowing a lot about the blood and, and all that stuff, but I just kind of found some things pretty interesting. Listen to this. I called it the blood purchase. Um, a caldema in the Strong's, um, it's actually a caldema. Uh, it's, um, in the Greek, it's Greek number 184. It means a caldema. Um, it, means, um, it means the field of blood and it corresponds to 2506 and 1818, which is a place near Jerusalem. So we know that. And it also means a place of violence or demolition or, extinct or extinction. Uh, a place to seduce holy or to be beguiled or to deceive someone. Kind of like, man, when you really start connecting some of these words you know um, and you get into the teachings of knowing that Jerusalem you know Israel God placed a garden eastward in Eden you can kind of start putting things together where different things literally happened Amen. maybe where you know the you know Eve was deceived and and I'll have to get into that another time but anyway I wrote the blood purchase no matter what we do, you know, it always goes back to the blood. And most of you guys know that um, what I teach about the blood, it started with the blood in the beginning and it ends with the blood in the end. And we know that in the Old Covenant, we see, you know, these temples and we see the Tabernacle of Moses and Solomon's Temple and then, you know, um, Zerubbabel starts building the temple around 444, but it's Herod who finishes it. And we see these abominations of desolation where, you know, they come and destroy the temple, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar or, you know, Rome or whatever it is, Titus, Epiphanes coming in and sacrificing. And, you know, but God said all of these were just shadows, you know, um, and, and that he doesn't dwell in a house made with hands. That means this building we're sitting in, it's a building, it's not a church. It, it, it's, a, it's a church in the sense of that it's been called out because that's what ecclesia means to be called out you are called out by God and God now doesn't live in a building or a temple made of hands but he lives inside of you and me because that was the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit to come and cleanse you so that God can live inside of us so now if we know that the desecration of the old temple was that you know they would sacrifice a pig on the altar or you know, whatever it was, when Titus Epiphany sacked it in 70 AD, son, it says that he was, the, the men of Rome was climbing over the top of the bodies inside of the holy place. There were so many priests that was killed. They all ran inside the temple, majority of them. And, um, and that gets into a whole nother deal. But the bloodshed, they said there was so much blood, it was rolling down the steps, coming out the temple doors. It was blood everywhere up in that place. So the place had been defiled. Well now, and it's, it's all about, you know, it's all about within. Christ doesn't live in a building made with hands, but he lives in the temple. That's you and me. So the desecration of the temple, how can you be desecrated? Well, it goes back to Genesis chapter 6. You know, how did the end of all man come unto the Lord? You know, Noah was perfect in his genealogy, in his genes. He had not contaminated himself with, you know, the fallen race. When the sons of God came down and took the daughters of men, and they just began to spread out, and, and Jesus, and, and, and the Lord comes to Noah, and he says, look, the end of all man has come to me. You know, you and your wife and your three sons and, and their wives, he said, look, come into the earth. You're perfect in your genes. The whole earth was contaminated, you know? And um, let me tell I'll tell you this. And I don't take it as, uh, though I, I read it, um, um, like the book of Enoch and the book of Jasher is both mentioned in the Word in Samuel. And um, I've read the whole book of Enoch and I've come through um, a good bit of, uh, of Jasher. But Jasher says, man, that... Um, now, I don't take it as inspired word. You just kind of, it kind of fills some stuff in, maybe. But it says that when Noah entered the ark, man, he, uh, it says in the book of Jasher that there was so many people that was gathered around the ark, beating on it and climbing on it, screaming at him, let, him, let us in. 
let us in, you know, but they were all corrupted. And the Bible says that, that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached the gospel. That God was going to, I mean, it was in the names, you know, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalel, Jerry, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. It was in their names what God was going to do. What was coming. Methuselah, when he dies, it comes. Man of a javelin, man of a rod. They all knew. Oh, no. Can you see him? No. What? You name your son what? Methuselah. Why you name him Methuselah? That means when he dies, the end comes. And Noah's like, hey, it's coming. It's coming. And what they're like, no, no, I'm sorry. No, it, it ain't nothing going to happen. It's the same mentality that's in the world today. Yes. Amen. Same exact mentality. No matter how many times we keep telling people, look, man, it's coming. He's coming. But the opposite is, of you don't know when you're going. He's coming. But do you know when you're going? I know a few times in my life, about three times, I liked it. I was almost killed. You never know. So, you need to be ready. What does ready mean? Man, you better know him. My, uh, a pastor of mine for 16 years, or up until he died, he said, you better know him heart to heart. Papa Hickman said, you better know him heart to heart before you meet him face to face. The only way you can meet him face to face is to, by coming into communion with him. It's the only way. You know? All right. Um, so, I'm getting back to the blood. Because no matter how you look at it, you know, it's all about the blood. And like I said before, and I'm going to end it with this, the days of Noah, they intermingled their seed. Their temple became a desolation. That's why when God told Joshua, go into the land, kill them all, men, women, and children. Their seed was contaminated. Don't intermingle yourselves with them. As the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. As the days of Lot were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What was going on in the days of Lot? Homosexuality, it was there. But what was the key thing? He likens it to Noah, as the days of Noah, and Lot. The angels come in, they want to have sex with angels. That's the whole throng today. The new song that's coming out at the, the Super Bowl. The new song that is going to play tomorrow. It's all about having sex with angels. Yes. Who's singing it is Coldplay and Beyonce. Beyonce. It's all about, all about having sex with angels. The video is all about the Hindu goddesses. So, listen, it's in our face. It's crazy. And if you're part of it, well, you're in trouble. When the, when the flood comes, and you're sitting in the stadium, or wherever it is that you're at, and you're not right with God. Hey, let me in, let me in. The door's closed. We get that through the parable of the ten virgins, and the Berit HaDashah, the New Testament, the New Covenant. They were all virgins. They were all clean. Five were foolish, waited, but five took oil, the Spirit of God, right? Let's keep going. It's all about the blood. America, Americuna, Americana, America, just so you'll know, you can search this out, it means land of the plumed serpent. Yes, that's what America means, land of the plumed serpent. You can check that out. But getting back to the blood. Blood. America was purchased by the blood of our forefathers, it says. How, why everybody make a big old deal out of, man, my forefathers died for this country. And look, I'm with it. At one time, I would have died for this country. I will not die for this country now. No way. Because I know what it's all about now. Only one I'll die for is Jesus Christ. Amen. And you. Because the only way you can serve Him is by serving others. Okay. The blood speaks. In Genesis 4, blood cries out. It speaks, right? Abel. What does Abel's blood cry out? Vengeance. 
But Jesus' blood cries out a more excellent grace, love. But blood cries out. Listen, if you think, if you don't think, I mean, it's all about blood. It's about blood in the beginning. When God made the first sacrifice. It's about the contamination of the blood in the days of Noah. It's about the contamination of the blood now. Right. How do they make you a desolation inhabitable by God? By changing your DNA. That's right. That's what they're doing. The mark is to change your DNA, to change who you are, so that the Holy Spirit will not live in you anymore or come and live inside of you. And many of them walked out the door because of that statement I've made. The blood, though, brings unity, and that's what we're here for. That's why we all gathered. If it wouldn't be about the blood of Jesus Christ, you, you and I wouldn't even be sitting together right now. We'd be doing our own thing. And we're all in unity. That Yeshua is the only way. He's the only way. And you have to make that stand. There ain't no unity in love. The so-called false love, Hinduism, and, 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 and all of these different religions coming together. Chrislam, and because that's what they're going to unify under. They're going to unify under love. But it's the wrong love. It's serpentine. You understand that? And they're going to look at you and say, oh, you don't want to be part of, look, we just, man, be a part of this. We want to just, you know, you don't love the people? Yeah. Oh, what? But you got to say that Jesus is the only way? Yes, I do. Yes. That's where I stand. And that's where I fall. You understand? And that's how it's got to be. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit will you be able to make that stand. Because in prison, when I asked them when I was ministering to you, how many guys would, get, would die for Jesus Christ? Every hand come up in there. Every one. And I told them, Jesus doesn't want you to die for him. He wants you to live for him. And they all put their hands down. How many would die? Ooh. The intention is good. But the heart is wicked. That's right. Peter said, I'll die for you where? The very, the, you, you, not only will you, you say you die, but tonight, tonight you'll deny you even know me. Three times, Peter. Right. Amen. Holy Spirit wasn't living in him yet. Right. They couldn't live in him yet. Why? Because Jesus hadn't died yet. The Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. He moved upon man. He didn't live in man yet. Because man was unclean and unfit until the ultimate sacrifice was made. That cleanses us on the inside. Now the Spirit has a habitation that He can come in and say, Peter, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strengthen you. Now I'm going to strengthen you so that you can do it. So if you think you could die for Jesus Christ right now and you don't have the Holy Spirit, <laughs> yourself is lying to you. Because you won't, you won't do it. I'm sorry. You'll save your skin every single time. You'll, save it, you'll try to save the skin every time. And listen to me. Billions of people are going to try to save their skin. Yeah. They're going to unite under the false banner of love <clears throat> when true love is to lay your life down. True love is to lay your life down. First, for Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. He gave us the example. He laid his life down for us. The blood brings unity. The blood will change you. The blood is the essence of life. Without the blood, you can't be cleansed. It brings new life. It's only by Christ's blood that we have an atonement that's been made. Redemption is by the blood. You know, I, I thought about this real quick. I wrote down signs of the blood. Check this out. Signs of the blood. Um, it, it, the moon turns to blood. And that's pretty crazy because, you know, the sun and the moon, the sun is likened unto, we see, uh, you know, uh, Jesus being the light of the world, but man is likened unto the lesser light. Right? So here this moon takes this 
appearance of man and the moon turns to blood. Wow, that blood, the lunar eclipse. We just had the four that passed. That's a sign for you and I. Just within, I'm thinking about, wow, we need the blood. We need to be washed in the blood so that we can be made white. Um, the blood without Christ, um, it produces vengeance and sin and cruelty and death. Blood is our life source. If you drain the blood out of you, you're a dead man. All right? Can I say something? Yeah, come on. I'm done. Blood without oxygen is blue. Jesus' spirit comes in. It gives life to the blood. So the veil without the spirit or without oxygen. Wow. The natural, he said to me, taught many times, the natural gives us an understanding. That's right. So the blood without the breath. Without life, that's right. Without life, it is a veil. That's right. We die, we live that's right. Receive the spirit. That's right. That's right. You know when it, it, that's an interesting scripture she pulls up right there, and when because Jesus when it says that, and it says, in Jesus he says, and he breathed on them. And he said, receive ye the Spirit. He was letting them know in which how the Spirit was going to come. It's, it's breath. It's in the wind. It's the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. Um, it says, uh, um, I wrote right here, this is that, la that last part. Without it, it brings uh, physical death. The blood is our life source, both physically and spiritually. Without, without it physically, it brings death. And without it spiritually, it brings death. You understand? Um, blood, it's the word dom. That which shed or causes death also means... So blood also means, you know, the, um, the juice of grapes. And that's why the blood of the new covenant. Jesus turned the water into wine, the juice of grapes. Well, we find that, you know, in, in John chapter 2, Johannine. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and the red tears the blue veil. So once you receive Yeshua, you know, he, it, it, he begins to open the veil to you. It gives us access through the veil that is the flesh.